Now today we are going to do a mixed question on limits as well as from definite integration. The question is limit n is tending towards infinity 1 upon n square summation of k is varying from 0 to n minus 1 k times integration k to k plus 1 and this following integral is given. So first of all I am going to focus on the integral. So let's generalize this integral. So whenever you have root over x minus alpha times beta minus x as you can generalize here this k is alpha here and k plus 1 is beta. So whenever this type of integrals are present you have to take a substitution remember. So x will be equal to alpha you are going to take cos square theta plus beta sin square theta here. Now after taking the substitution we are going to find d of x here. So first I am going to calculate the integral here. Once I calculate the integral I am going to evaluate the summation then followed by the limit. So we will go like this from right to left in this direction. So this means I have to find here x, d of x here. So x I am going to write, I am going to place the value of alpha here that is k times cos square theta plus k plus times sin square theta here. Now d of x will be equal to easily I can write the differentiation of cos square theta is minus sin 2 theta. So minus k times sin 2 theta here. And then differentiation of sin square theta is here is k plus 1 times is sin 2 theta here and whole times d theta here differential. So from here I got d of x as minus k sin 2 theta and plus k sin 2 theta I think will cancel out here and we'll directly get this as sin 2 theta d theta only. So this information later I'm going later on I'm going to use in cal while calculating the integral here. Now once I've taken a substitution in definite integration I have to change the limit. Now let's calculate, let's start with the upper limit and lower limit. So I'm starting with the lower limit here. So lower limit means when x is equal to k, then what will be the value of theta? So I'm putting k is equal to k cos square theta plus k plus 1 sin square theta here. Now I'm going to take k cos square theta on the other side. So if I, the moment I take this on the other side, I can take k common and 1 minus cos square theta will be sin square theta. So this will be k sin square theta is equal to k plus 1 sin square theta. Now from here I can say sin square theta will be equal to 0 because k sin square theta and k sin square theta will cancel out. So only remaining thing is sin square theta is equal to 0 that means theta will be equal to 0 here. Now I got the lower limit that is theta is equal to 0. Let's fight for upper limit here. So for right upper limit here. So upper limit as upper limit x is equal to k plus 1. What will be the value of theta? So k plus 1 is equal to k cos square theta plus k plus 1. Here we will write sin square theta. So I think I can take k plus 1 sin square theta on the other side. As it is if I take k plus 1 common I will get k plus 1 times cos square theta here. And that will be equal to k cos square theta. So from here, I think I can cancel out k cos square theta, k cos square theta. And remaining is cos square theta is equal to 0. This implies cos theta is equal to 0. That means theta will be equal to pi by 2. So I got the upper limit here and lower limit is 0. Upper limit is pi by 2. Now I'm going to focus on the integration here. Next. Now the next thing is we have to simplify this value x minus k into k plus 1 minus x. So let's substitute this value and simplify. So if I put the value here, k cos square theta plus k plus 1 times sin square theta and minus k here. Similarly, I am going to substitute here. So k plus 1 will be as it is here. Minus times it will be k cos square theta and then minus k plus 1. Here you will get this as sin square theta. Now after this, I think we can here do something here with k cos square theta and minus k. If I take k common, we will get cos square theta minus 1 and I think we will get this as minus k times sin square theta and plus we will get k plus 1 into sin square theta here. Similarly here I think I can take k plus 1 common from these two terms. If I take k plus 1 common I think we will get this as k plus 1 multiplied by 1 minus sin square theta that is cos square theta and minus k cos square theta here. Now here I think I can cancel out something something. So minus k sin square theta plus k sin square theta will cancel out and here plus k cos square theta and minus k cos square theta will cancel out. Remaining I think we have here 
sin square theta and remaining is cos square theta here it is independent of k the moment you take the root over here because in integral they are asking the root over this value i think so root over this will be equal to i think sin theta into cos theta so we have to take the mod since our upper limit and lower limit are varying from 0 to pi by 2 both are positive i can remove the mod so as it is sin theta and cos theta will come now let's integrate now after substitution we have successfully converted this integral into 0 to pi by 2 sin theta into cos theta in place of d of x previously we have calculated d of x is sin 2 theta d theta here so i think i can write this integral as i'm multiplying and dividing by 2 i can write this as 2 sin theta cos theta that is sin 2 theta and we'll get this integration as 0 to pi by 2 here 1 by 2 outside and we'll get this as sine square 2 theta here divide by 2 and I have to return outside so d theta now I'm going to convert sine square 2 theta in the terms of cos 4 theta so 1 by 2 integration 0 to pi by 2 I'm going to write this as 1 minus cos of 4 theta divided by 2 d theta now I'm going to integrate this so half outside integration of 1 is theta by 2 so I'm going to take 1 by 4 also outside that is 1 by 4 and the integration of 1 is theta and integration of cos theta is sin theta and divide by 4 now the lower limit is 0 upper limit is pi by 2 here now let's substitute upper limit and lower limit so we'll get this as 1 by 4 times of if you put the upper limit here you'll get this as pi by 2 minus when you put pi by 2 here so you'll get this as 2 pi sin 2 pi will be 0 this is upper limit minus lower limit so when you put 0 this will be 0 and here it will be 0 because sine of 0 is 0 so in the end our answer is I think from here pi by 8 now we have converted the integration into this form and in the end we got the integration value as pi by 8 now let's tackle the summation next now after calculating the value of integration it will be very easy to tackle summation as well as limit here so that will be equal to limit as it is and is tending towards infinity here I'm going to take pi by 8 outside and 1 by n square is as it is here so pi by 8 is as it is we'll get the summation of k only where k is varying from 0 to n minus 1 here I'm going to open this here so this is limit as it is limit and is tending towards infinity pi by 8 here multiplied by 1 by n square now once you open this you'll get this as 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and it varies so on till n minus 1 now this is equal to limit n is tending towards infinity here pi by 8 multiplied by 1 by n square now we know sum of n natural number is first n natural number is n into n plus 1 by 2 similarly summation of n minus 1 natural number will be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 now simply if limit n is tending towards infinity is given I'm going to divide by n square so I'll get this as pi by 16 here because pi by 8 into 1 by 2 is pi by 16 and remaining is if I divide by n square in numerator and denominator I'll get this as 1 minus 1 by n here now since n is tending towards infinity here this limit will be 1 by infinity will be 0 and simply I'll get pi by 16 into 1 so final answer of our problem is pi by 16 and that'll be all